In this video, we're learning about the genetic code. So we'll cover how DNA is organized in cells, the differences between DNA in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, what the genetic code is, and then finally, how to interpret codon tables as well. Let's start with how DNA is organized in cells. DNA is a really long molecule that carries our genetic information. And because it's so long, and we have multiple DNA molecules in every cell, it needs to be tightly packed in order to fit into our cells. To do this, DNA wraps around proteins called histones to form a DNA histone complex. This complex then coils up even further into a structure called chromatin, and coiling it up like this helps to pack the DNA into chromosomes. Now, each chromosome is actually just one long DNA molecule that's compact enough to fit into the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. Within these DNA molecules, there are many different genes, and each has a specific locus, which just means its position on a chromosome. Each of these genes contain the instructions making a sequence of amino acids, which will then form the polypeptides that make up proteins. So we can define genes as sections of DNA that code for polypeptides. A couple of other terms we need to know are the genome and proteome. When we refer to a genome, we're talking about all the genetic material in an organism's cells. So if our diagram here was taken from the cell of this person, all this genetic material would be their genome. And because the proteome refers to all the proteins that can be made from this genetic material, the genome effectively codes for the proteome. It's also important to know that not all parts of a DNA molecule actually code for proteins. Within a given gene, exons are the coding parts of DNA that do contain instructions for making polypeptides, whilst introns are non-coding parts of DNA that do not directly code for polypeptides, but they can have other functions instead. Next, let's go over the differences between DNA in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. First, let's quickly recap what these terms mean. Eukaryotes are organisms with complex cells that have a nucleus. So that's things like plant and animal cells. Prokaryotes are simpler, single-celled organisms that don't have a nucleus, like bacterial cells. Eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells also have several differences in their DNA. In terms of where DNA is stored, in eukaryotes it's within their nucleus, whereas in prokaryotes it's found in the cytoplasm. Then for the structure of DNA, in eukaryotes it's long and linear, but in prokaryotic DNA the DNA is shorter and circular, including one large circular chromosome and smaller sections of DNA called plasmids. For histones, Eukaryotic DNA is associated with them, but prokaryotic DNA isn't. The two cell types also differ in whether they contain non-coding introns. Whilst eukaryotic DNA does contain introns, prokaryotic DNA generally doesn't. Interestingly though, the DNA in mitochondria and the DNA in chloroplasts, which are both organelles found in certain eukaryotic cells, is similar to prokaryotic DNA. It's short and circular, and also not associated with histones, which suggests an ancient relationship between these organelles and bacteria. Now let's explore what the genetic code is. At its core, the genetic code is the sequence of bases in DNA that determines the sequence of amino acids in polypeptides. There are a few important features of the genetic code that you need to know about. First, we call it a triplet code because each amino acid is coded for by a sequence of three DNA bases. For example, if we have the DNA sequence CCA, TCG, CCA, CAT, this sequence of bases is the genetic code, and each triplet is first transcribed into three complementary mRNA bases, which we call codons. Here, these mRNA codons would be GGU, AGC, GGU, GUA. Because remember that RNA has the base uracil, U, 
instead of thymine T. This sequence of codons then codes for four specific amino acids, lysine, serine, glycine again, and valine. The second feature is that it's universal, which means that the same DNA triplet codes for the same amino acid in almost all organisms. Third, it's non-overlapping, meaning each base is read only once. So for our example here, these first few bases would be read as CCA-TCG, and not CCA-CAT. Then fourth, it's degenerate, meaning most amino acids are coded for by more than one triplet. For instance, the DNA sequence ACA and ACG both code for the amino acid cysteine. Finally, let's look at how to interpret the genetic code using codon tables. Codon tables like this one show which amino acids correspond to mRNA bases or DNA bases. We can tell this codon table is using mRNA bases because it includes the base U for uracil. If it was using DNA bases, it would have included T for thymine instead. Now, questions around this subject might ask you to work out which amino acids are coded for by a specific DNA sequence using a codon table. So, let's try a worked example. What sequence of amino acids would be coded for by the following DNA sequence? TAC, GGA, CGT. If we had DNA bases in the codon table, we could just look at the table straight away and simply read off our answer. But, as it's got mRNA bases instead, we first need to figure out what mRNA sequence would be produced by our DNA code. This sequence of DNA bases would result in an mRNA strand being produced with the sequence AUG, CCU, GCA. Then we need to read the codon table to see what amino acids this would produce. So, for the first codon, AUG, we look in the first base column for A, then narrow down our options with the second base, U, and then read off our final base, G, to see that this codon codes for the amino acid methiamine, or MET for short. Then doing the same thing for our next mRNA codon, we can see that CCU codes for proline, or PRO. And after that, the last codon, GCA, codes for alanine, or ALA. And so overall, this DNA sequence codes for methionine, proline, and alanine. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.